Hello, and welcome to In the Privy Council, a podcast reviewing cases heard before the Judicial Committee of His Majesty's Most Honorable Privy Council, brought to you by the Legal Style Blog. I'm your host, Elijah Granite. This week, we are discussing the Mauritian case of Blue Lagoon Beach Hotel and Company Limited and Assessment Review Committee, the citation for which is 2023 UKPC 24, MRC. Remember that because Mauritius is a republic, this case is decided directly by the Judicial Committee rather than by His Majesty. This case is about value added tax, VAT, and the complexities it can create. The appellant, Blue Lagoon, are hoteliers who make deals with travel companies, whereby the travel company takes on an obligation to purchase a certain number of rooms on an all-inclusive package within a one-year period. The company is obliged to pay a fixed amount each month, regardless of if the guest actually arrives. That fixed amount will eventually add up to the total cost of the rooms. If the guest actually arrives, that clearly is a service, and Blue Lagoon agrees that in that case, they owe 15% VAT. However, where the room is never booked, because the travel company can't sell it, Blue Lagoon argued that it falls into a separate category of special income, since no service was performed nor a good delivered. The Mauritian revenue disagreed and said that this counted as a service. The dispute made its way to the Supreme Court, which sided with the revenue, saying VAT was due. Blue Lagoon then appealed to the board, where we joined the case. For the board, my lady, Lady Rose of Colmworth, began with the relevant legislation, the Value Added Tax Act, that's VATA, 1998, which provides in Section 9, that VAT is charged to all taxable supply from the moment of the time of the supply. Supply is defined in Section 4 as anything other than a supply of goods done for consideration. To interpret this statute, it was common ground that VATA, being modeled after UK legislation, could be interpreted in line with the UK and EU case law on VAT. Neither side cited any Mauritian authorities or asserted that there was a material distinction between the two countries' VAT laws. Therefore, her ladyship started by turning to EU case law, noting that the Court of Justice has stated that the characteristics of supply are, first, that it has a legal reciprocal relationship of payment or other consideration in exchange for a service. Second, that there is a direct link between the payment and the service. And third, that determining if supply occurred is an objective exercise, not dependent on the intentions of parties to the transaction. The hotel asserted that supply only arises when the client arrives, and that if a client does not arrive, the transaction merely accords the travel company the opportunity to sell a room. Lady Rose of Colmworth was not impressed by this argument. In her ladyship's view, the reservation of the place in the hotel was the underlying service, and constituted supply for the purposes of VAT. Here, the European case law was key in shaping her ladyship's opinion. In Case 277 of 2005, Societaire Thermale de Eugénie Les Bains and Ministère de l'Économie, des Finances et de l'Industrie, the Court of Justice noted a hotel deposit paid, which would act as a cancellation charge if the client backed out, so that if the client didn't take the room, the hotel would keep the deposit but get no more money, was actually just an incentive to perform a contract, rather than a supply. By contrast, in joined cases 250 of 2014 and 289 of 2014, Air France, KLM, and Hop, Brit Air, SAS, and Ministère des Finances et des Comptes Publics, the Court of Justice found that flight tickets 
where the passenger did not show up for the flight, were still subject to VAT because the consumer gained the right to fly in exchange for consideration, which was a supply even if that right was never exercised. Her ladyship considered the factual matrix of this case fell more clearly into the Air France category, because the travel companies are committing to pay the entire cost of the room, regardless of if they can then sell that room on to some tourist. The right to use the room is owned by the travel company. The fact that the company then sells that right to other customers is irrelevant. As this is a supply of something that is not a good in exchange for consideration, it is therefore the supply of services, according to the legislation. This disposes of the case in favor of the revenue, but her ladyship noted an additional point. Below, the Supreme Court had suggested that because the invoice from Blue Lagoon had included VAT before the company disputed it, the transaction became VAT eligible simply by the invoice saying VAT. The board disavowed that argument, noting that invoices do not determine VAT eligibility, but merely the dates on which the taxable person is required to account for VAT. This is a minor but very important clarification, because the contrary view would risk innocent parties who mistakenly invoiced VAT creating a legal obligation to pay it even though the underlying transaction was not taxable. Turning now to our analysis of the case, this is a straightforward point of statutory interpretation. The VAT regime of the European Union, which is adopted by the UK and subsequently by Mauritius, is designed as an instrument to capture all manner of economic activity which is performed in exchange for consideration. The hotel got its full payment for the rooms, no matter if they were occupied or not, and the travel company gained guaranteed rooms to sell to clients. This is a clear supply transaction. Now, it may not seem like a service in the ordinary sense of the word, but service is deliberately given a very wide definition in the statute, which deviates from its ordinary meaning. The idea that this transaction was more like a deposit was absurd, precisely because it was, in fact, payment in full, albeit over a period of 12 months. The analogy to the unused flight ticket in the Air France case is clear. The board plainly made the right decision. Thank you very much for listening to another episode of In the Privy Council, brought to you by the Legal Style Blog. I have been your host, Elijah Granite. If you want more legal content, visit our website, legalstyle.co.uk, or follow us on Twitter at Legal Style Blog. If you have any comments, suggestions, rants, or raves, the email of the podcast is editor at legalstyle.co.uk. We also welcome any ratings or reviews on your usual podcast platforms. Until next time, goodbye, and remember, Gloire à toi, Il Maurice.